I, I think they're wrong. I think democracy really is broken uh, in this country, but what it's been broken by is not the very legitimate uh, criticisms about the economic and social consequences of austerity and all that kind of thing, because they are part of the democratic process. You know, there is that, that's exactly what democracy is about. Some people want austerity, other people want public services. What it's been broken by was the very fact of having a referendum. Because, and this, uh, this is where I'd like to develop slightly uh, uh, Barrett's point. Uh, the point is, uh, the point is that the democracy in this country is a representative parliamentary democracy and has been uh, throughout history. Uh, actually, almost every successful democracy that has ever existed has been a representative democracy rather than a direct democracy. And the reason for that is that although the ultimate sovereignty is vested in the people, you cannot and should not let the people decide specific issues, not because they're incapable of it or they're too stupid or too misinformed, but because each issue has to be decided in the context of a whole lot of other issues. You can't ask people a simple yes, no question and then hope to implement that. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the, example, the example I always give, and I gave it here last night, so I'm sorry to repeat it, is that if you ask in a plebiscite or referendum, you ask people, would you like to have more and more gen better and more generous public services? Overwhelmingly, you'd have a referendum saying yes. If you ask people, would you like to pay lower taxes? Overwhelmingly, in a referendum, you would say yes. Well, the answer to that could be more government borrowing. But if you ask people in a referendum, do you think we should have more government borrowing, overwhelmingly every referendum would say no. And that's why you cannot decide these uh, issues that are not just complex, but interlocked and interconnected through a direct democracy, and that's why we have parliament. Now, what has happened is that the referendum, and, and Mark is right, that parliament took this decision to turn it over to the people and say that this is a once and for all decision. And that was the big mistake. That was the original sin. And it, uh, you know, it was David Cameron's. However, I would just add one other point. OK, so that original sin occurred. People were asked. They did give a judgment by a arguably decisive but small margin. But there are then those people who now complain, well, that was not implemented. Democracy has been broken because Parliament gave a promise which they have failed to implement. That, I think, is a completely false criticism. What has Parliament been doing for the last three years if not trying, trying to, to implement trying the to referendum? Implement. They have been doing nothing else. We have lost, we've had a government which was totally committed to implementing this referendum. It, ha had, it held a general election, and then it lost its majority. But even after losing majority, it continued to be Im uh, obsessed with implementing this referendum. We've now lost a prime minister as a result of her determination to do nothing but implement the results of the referendum. So after three years of parliament and government banging their heads against this brick wall of trying to implement a referendum, is it reasonable to go back to the people and say, well, we've tried our damnedest, but we can't do it. Do you want us to continue banging our heads against a brick wall? If the people want that to happen, fair enough. But, you know, the only problem with that argument you know, is that as David the, Davis the himself said, wrong, you know, surely a second yeah, exactly. Well, just for the final sentence. If a democracy can't change its mind, it ceases to be a democracy. Can I, can I ask a question yeah. about And at all, I, I, I think that's a really fine analysis of what's happened. And I want to back it up with the, uh, the determination of the Supreme Court. Because what the Supreme Court did when it was considering uh, the role of Parliament uh, in triggering Article 50 is it said that the referendum decided that we should leave the EU, but it was for Parliament to decide how. And as you say, Parliament has desperately been trying to decide how and has found it incapable 
of coming up with a satisfactory answer. And if, if I can give one apology uh, to you and everybody else, it's that at some stage in the process, when we were debating having a referendum, I did not stand up in Parliament and say, this is insane to decide the future of our country on whether Mrs. Jones at 52 Acacia Avenue happens to die on the 22nd of June or on the 24th of June. A 50% plus one referendum cannot be the basis of our country's future for the next 40 years. It should have been a threshold. There should have been a threshold that said, if you want to change the constitution, it should be whatever it was, 60%, 66%. That meant it would be determined and decided for the next 20, 30, 40 years. And that would have been the way to do it. We didn't do it that way. That was a mistake. And now we have to move on from where we are. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI TV.